Um, go ahead and let Coach Nielsen with a couple comments, and we'll get going. Thanks, Steve. Uh, well, excited for game week. Uh, you know, it's 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 certainly interesting playing um, a midweek game, something that uh, they haven't done here at University of South Dakota. Uh, had a chance to experience a lot of these. It it uh, uh, is a is a different schedule for sure. At the same time, you know, preseason uh, this year has has been good. Um, today we started classes, so um, uh, we had a. Uh, uh, a little longer, what I'd call preseason camp than what we've we've had in the past, and taking advantage of that time uh, uh, with uh, uh, with our guys not having to to split uh, uh, their focus between uh, football and and academics. So um, yeah, the uh, um, the the season, I guess, uh, kind of off to an official start and. Uh, we're we're definitely excited to get going. And with that, we'll open questions. Go ahead, Nathan. Hey, Coach. You mentioned that the process for a midweek game is a lot different than a Saturday game. I guess for you guys, what goes into that preparation process in an unusual week with a Thursday game? Uh, yeah, so we have a, you know, a weekly routine, you know, at, uh, uh, what normally is a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday routine. And, and actually we started that routine on Sunday, um, to, to get kind of on that same practice sequence, um, uh, as we would in a normal week. Um, the fact that we didn't, uh, have class last week allowed us to kind of set that up uh, to to be able to to do that. Um, but uh, it is going to be different, you know. You you um, I think what really makes it different is the the fact that we start classes today and play on Thursday. You know, last few years you've always had like a week to get your guys into uh, the flow of class and football. Um, because we haven't played until the, the second weekend of class. So that's probably more of an adjustment for our guys than it is for us as, as coaches, honestly. With fall camp over, would you say that you guys accomplished what you wanted to see through the preseason and coming into this first game week? Well, it's funny because uh, y'all, you know, with with the amount of camp that we had, uh, I think as we went through camp, we were feeling like, you know, we're ahead, we're ahead, ahead of where we want to be, and then you get to this week, and it's always like, geez, you know, I'm, we 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 still need to do this, we still need to do that. Um, but you know, overall, uh, one of the the keys for us in camp was to make sure that uh, some of the the newer players that we have that are going to be stepping into starting roles. Uh, get the the kind of experience they need to be able to to go out on Thursday and perform at a high level. I uh, feel like we were able to accomplish that. Um, um, and uh, um, you know, from a schematic standpoint, um, you know, the fact that we're a second year in an offensive system, um, you know, we were able to build on on some of the things that uh, we did a year ago. Uh, on that side of the football. And and so I feel good about what we were able to accomplish um, in camp. And we did that while staying uh, reasonably healthy, which is always important as well. What do you want to see out of this first game on Thursday? Well, uh, like all first games, uh, you want to you want to you want to play at a high level, minimize mistakes. Um, you know, in all three phases of the game, I, I think that's uh, first games are 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 typically a lot like that. You know, the team that makes the fewest mistakes is you know tends to be the team that that wins. So things like taking care of the football, uh, being super sound and executing at a high level in the kicking game. Um, obviously, from an offensive and defensive standpoint. You know, going out and and executing consistently. Um, you know, that's that's really what uh, first games are are all about. You know, offensively, we 
we, uh, um, you know, our focus has been we, we've got to be a better and more consistent offense than what we were a year ago if we're going to take the next step forward as a program and and defensively making sure that we solidify some of those positions where we lost experienced players. Uh, and uh, and so, you know, from a from a, a situation of, hey, we're, we're at a point where we need a game to evaluate some of those things, I think that's exactly where we're at. And one more for me, college football recently implemented more in-helmet communications coming into this season. What has your process of approaching that been? How much have you used it? And what what do you think that process will be like going into the season? How will you guys implement that? Yeah, that uh, that any helmet communication is has only been permitted at the FBS level. It's not uh, committed, uh, not permitted yet at the FCS level. Uh, we could technically use it uh, a week from now against Wisconsin. We we don't plan to at this point. Um, the newest thing for us is the use of video re uh, replay on the sideline, which they've implemented uh, at our level. And, you know, we've been practicing with that. Uh, we do have a system uh, that we'll be uh, utilizing Thursday night uh, to be able to to look at previous series uh, with our guys on the sideline. I, I think from a, a teaching tool standpoint, it certainly has uh, some value. Um uh, at the same time, I think it's one of those things that it's a lot easier to use in practice uh, than, you know, from a game standpoint, it's going to uh, require us as coaches to to uh, be highly, highly organized and and uh, but um, anxious to to see it firsthand as a as another coaching tool. All right, board. Uh Coach, obviously next week the roles are a little reversed when you guys go to Wisconsin. I'm sure they'll kind of be talking to their team about, you know, hey, you have about how much you have to respect a, an opponent coming from the FCS level. Uh, do you kind of have to? I mean, I don't know if that's really necessary for an opening game like this, but do you kind of have to say, hey, you know, ignore the Division Two moniker, just you know, ignore some of those things that are coming into play here with a, a Division Two team coming into the dome? Well, if the first week of college football didn't show you that you can't pay any attention to uh, rankings and divisions, then you weren't watching because, um, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you this, you know, I coached at that level for 12 years. I know full well the quality of football and the quality of football players that are playing at that level. And and honestly, first games are really more about about you as a team, you know, sometimes than than the opponent that you're playing, regardless of if that opponent's FCS, Division Two, FBS. It's about how good you can be, and that's really what we've stressed to our guys: is how good can we be Thursday night in all three phases of the game. And and uh, you know, Northern's got a very experienced football team on both sides of the football. Um, you know, they they've got. Uh, really good physical size. Uh, they've got some uh, new skilled players that they've mixed with their returning, and so we're gonna we're gonna have to execute and play well on on in, in all three phases of the game. Our guys understand that, and and that will be the expectation. And if you do play at your best level, is this a game you kind of hope you can maybe get a little look at, at your depth and you know maybe some of your twos and threes a little bit. To, Certainly, if you guys can perform at the level you'd like to. Well, you know, uh, we'll worry about that if those situations present themselves. But, you know, right now it's about, uh, you know, playing our very best and and uh, playing our very best people to to play our very best. And so, um, you know, our, our focus, we, we, we feel like we've got more depth at some positions than we had a year ago. Um, I think the receiver room is – is an example uh, where you're going to see more people play um, just because we feel like we're deeper there than what we were uh, a year ago. And, and, uh, and so from a depth standpoint, uh, you know, there's some positions where you're going to see us play more people um, early on in the game um, in some positions where you're probably going to see uh, the regulars uh, play the majority of the game because you don't feel like you have that kind of depth. And finally, for my part, I know this was long before you had taken over this program, but uh, since 
USD had made the Division One program. It had been kind of a in all sports really had been kind of a slow process to play some of the other South Dakota schools that were in the Division Two level for non conference games in all sports really. Um, I know obviously you'd probably prefer to play another Division One school uh, scheduling wise if you have a non conference game, but if you're in a position like this to play a Division Two, would you prefer to? If, and like I said, if you're in this position, would you prefer to keep playing uh, these in-state games, uh, whether it's with a Northern, Augie, USF, would you prefer to kind of keep it in-state? Because obviously there is a, like maybe a little more interest. There's certainly some more history with these games. And, uh, you know, you obviously see a little more of a visiting contingent. Uh, would, would you kind of prefer to keep playing these regional teams uh, with the Division Two if you have to play a lower division game like this? Well, I think from an institutional decision standpoint, as we looked, you know, with this being a 12 game year and uh, we needed another uh, home game to to balance the schedule. And and it was really kind of late in the process as we were investigating some, you know, Division One possibilities that Division Two even passed new legislation that allowed this to to be a possibility to to have Division Two teams play on this weekend. And so when that happened immediately, you know, our approach was to uh, to look at, you know, in-state teams and and uh, the possibility of, of uh, in-state matchup rather than we had calls from all over the country from Division II teams that were interested in potentially playing uh, on that opening weekend, um, knowing that we were uh, looking for a game. And, and so... Yeah, you know, I think that uh, standpoint, from a fan interest standpoint, sure. When you play uh, in-state uh, teams, it's it's going to generate um, you know greater uh, fan interest. But you know, it's probably going to be uh, you know as we go back now into the regular kind of eleven game schedule, unless you know for some reason something changes that you know we're going to be continued to allowed to play twelve every year. Um, it's going to make it pretty difficult to play uh, non-Division One opponents uh, under those guidelines. Thank you. All right, Jay. Coach, how are you doing? Good, Jay. Um, first off, just, you know, the energy of the season that you guys had most successful at this level, um, the the blackout theme and all the, the excitement that's been generated through uh, marketing on, on that part of it. Um, what's the energy? been like down there just in terms of getting this season started and trying to follow up uh in in, in what you did accomplish last year yeah well i think our guys are definitely excited to play i i know they're tired of of uh banging each other around um you know preseason camp uh with the late school start actually ended up being almost a full week longer than what we've had in the past and and so game week, uh, you add to that, you know, some of the um, excitement of playing a, a Thursday night game, which is a very unique thing here um, at the University of South Dakota. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to get a great crowd, um, you know, hoping we get a great student crowd um, that uh, will come out and and uh, support the team. And so our guys are really excited to play and, and uh, you know, look forward to, uh, an opportunity to to play uh, in uh, in our dome uh, with Northern State specifically. You know, I know w when you look at the you you don't want to look ahead to to Wisconsin, obviously, but uh, traditionally, at least uh, in your tenure here, I think all the FBS games have been right away week one. Um, how do you like the fact that it shook out the way it did in getting an opportunity to play a game, let alone against a Division two opponent? before you go do that, especially with some of those things you mentioned about figuring out, trying to figure out how to fill some of the holes on the defensive side and different things like that. Yeah. I've always, uh, I've always loved opening, uh, at home, you know, and when I was at Western Illinois, we were able to do that. Um, you know, most every year, the way our schedule worked out, uh, I think there's, you know, there's great opportunity when you open at home. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, travel number one. You don't have to worry about paring down your roster to a travel number, um, and uh, uh, allows you to, to, uh, um, you know, to potentially get off to a to a really positive start by playing at home. And uh, so, you know, from that standpoint, I guess. Uh, 
Um, I like I, I like the fact that we're opening at home and and you always talk about in in college football that you make your most improvement from week one to week two. And uh, when you have that home game, I don't have to travel back, <laughs> you know, after uh, after a road game week one, it gives you just a little bit more time uh, as a football team to to uh, be that much better uh, the following week. When it comes to the Wolves specifically uh, and, and being familiar with the NSIC like you are and the brand of football that's often played in that league, uh, what are some of the concerns that do come to mind uh, when you look at this this team that Mike Schmidt's going to bring to Vermillion? Yeah, uh, you know, um, you know, I think, uh, as I said, you know, I'm a coach in that league for 10 years, was a part of a couple of national championship teams. Uh, understand that there's uh, lots of players that are on their roster that could well be on our roster and and uh, able to 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 be uh, high level uh, players at any level of college football and so um, you know we're going to have to go out and 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 uh, um, play high level football offensively defensively um, you know they're experienced on both sides of the football. Um, they got experience at all three levels uh, defensively. Um, got a lot of experience up front uh, offensively. Uh, they got some newer players at their skill positions that uh, I think they feel really good about. And so, uh, offensively, uh, you know, they're, you're, you're going to have to defend the field because they're going to throw it. They're going to run it. Um, defensively, they'll play a very aggressive style. Um, that's going to make you earn every yard that you get. And, and obviously early games, as I said, about mistakes and, and being really good in the kicking game. And so, um, you know, our guys, um, you know, our guys are, are, are focused on, on what we have to do and that's play our best football of the year Thursday night. You feel like, um, obviously the target's a little bit bigger uh, to start when you've had the season that you've had and, and our, thought of the way you are nationally right now coming into the year. And and obviously with Northern state, they're coming in with a mindset, you know, great game, great opportunity for them to, to play against not only a, a good football team, but one of, one of the best in the division above them. So uh, have you guys discussed that, that mentality all, of all, and just knowing that you are going to get everybody's best shot just because of who you are and what, what your jerseys say now? Yeah, I, I think that's one thing about football. You know, it, football is a really unique game. You got to prove, you got to prove it every week. Um, and, uh, you know, preseason rankings or preseason rankings, they, they mean nothing uh, because you haven't proven anything yet. And so uh, we're going to have to uh, prove that we're a good football team Thursday night um, by playing hard, by executing at a high level. Um and that's uh, that's really uh, uh, the goal that our program has every week, you know, to be the very best football team that we're capable of being uh, every week. Um, and uh, um, that starts uh, Thursday night for us. Last one for me, just uh, from a personnel standpoint, obviously, as you look over this roster, there's a, and it's a great problem for you to have. There's a lot of a lot of names that you got used to saying a whole bunch last year. Guys like me got used to saying a whole bunch last year. Uh, but who are the new ones that your fans um, and, and the rest of the country are gonna gonna be taking note of quickly? Yeah, I think you know defensively, um, you know we're really excited. Uh, uh, you know Mike Keys Grace, who came on a, as a redshirt freshman last year, uh, going to put himself into a position this year as more of an every down player, along with the rest of that front group uh with uh Blake Holden and Mo Newsom and and uh uh Nick Gaze you know I think uh, uh that front has a chance to to be uh to be really good um you know as you go into that linebacker room where you lost uh, uh Brock Mogensen and Stephen Hillis uh, that seemed like they were here forever um and played so much football you know, Gary Bryant's a guy that's emerged out of that room as a as a true um, and a future leader in 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 that position group. And then in the back end, they, you know, with uh, uh, with Dennis Shorter and Jojo Gaines as experienced safeties returning, I think the the one guy that uh, uh, we added to our roster as a transfer, Mike Reed. 
you know, is certainly capable of being a very, very high level and and will be a very high level uh, player for us uh, in that in that back end. And, you know, on the offensive side, just certainly we got all that experience in the in the uh, skill positions coming back. Um, and, uh, um you know, excited to to have you know that much experience there, and and uh, need the uh, need those guys to perform at a high level for us. Thanks, coach. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, coach. Like Jay mentioned, you know, a lot of excitement going around this season with the blackout home opener. How are the uh, team? How's the team feeling about the new turf and you know first live game on that turf? <laughs> Uh, well, they're excited to play at home. They always are. Um, you know, the new turf has been a little bit different, you know, getting, we practiced on it and we practice indoors a little bit more than what we normally, uh, have done in the preseason. Um, number one, it's a little bit more forgiving than the old turf, which as a result, we didn't like to practice on it a lot, but also feels a little bit different underfoot. Um, and so our, uh, guys have, but, you know, we've, we've had to get used to the footing and making sure that, you know, from a footwear standpoint, we got the right, um, you know, right cleats on and and uh, uh, guys feel good about what they're wearing. So, uh, but it looks great, um, you know, and just another demonstration of the commitment that our administration is making to Division One football and, and uh, you know, the, the fact that we're, um, you know, doing something uh, fun like a, a blackout, um, you know, in, in home game number one, uh, chance for fans to to really get involved and, and show their support for uh, Coyote Athletics and Coyote Football. Yeah, just last one for me. Obviously, like you said, feeling out process in the first game of the season. Is there anyone on any either side of the ball or a position group that you hope can set the tone coming into this first game? But I, I think foot, winning football always starts up front. And uh, so, you know, I talked a little bit about our defensive line and and obviously that group's got to be good, um, be able to put pressure on the passer and be, be good against the run. Uh, I'll say the same thing about our offensive line. Uh, you know, we've got three full-time starters back and uh, a couple of guys that started a handful of games each back. Uh, we've added uh, a little bit of depth to that group, but you know, that's a group that needs to get off to a good start. You know, if if you have the ability uh, to run the ball consistently um, from our standpoint offensively, it opens up uh, a lot of things. And and uh, that's an area that, you know, at times we were pretty good last year. At at times we were, you know, not so good. And and uh, so I think that's, that's where it all starts, um, you know, being good up front. Uh, being a team that has the ability to to control a line of scrimmage when you need to control a line of scrimmage. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Awesome. We've got one last person and Ian Sack. You've got about seven minutes left. So go ahead, Ian. Sounds good. Morning, Coach. Good morning. Um, yeah, just one question for me. Uh, for the position groups that did have uh, position battles, how are the, those shaken out over the uh, final few days of camp? Well, probably the the biggest uh, position group battle, um, you know, that linebacker group. I, I mentioned Gary Bryant. Uh, other guys you're going to see play in that position group. You're going to see Nate Ewell, uh, who was a transfer from uh, from from Grandview. Uh, you're going to see Gabe Hardman um, in in that position uh, group as well, uh, playing um, on Thursday night. Um, you know, so. Um, you know, otherwise, uh, you know, I, d I do feel like, you know, we've got some additional depth in the secondary. And so you're going to see some some guys there, a guy by the name of Roman Tillman, who uh, has really, really come on uh, as a redshirt freshman, is going to play a lot uh, in the secondary um, on uh, on Thursday night. Um, offensively, I, I talk about increased depth at wide receiver, uh, new face that you're going to see a fair amount is uh, Karan Adams, um, transferred from Iowa State to go along with uh, the the Bells and the Martins and the, uh, J.V. on Phelps and Tristan Michaud, uh, all who, uh, um, you know, played uh, uh, 
uh, a, a fair amount uh, last year. Um, so, um, you know, I think the, those uh, those positions um, are probably the ones where, you know, we may have had the, the biggest battles, whether it was for a starting position or who was going to be the next guy, uh, the next guy in, so to speak, after after the starters. Awesome. And if that's all the questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up a few minutes early. Thanks, everyone. We will get this recorded and posted as soon as we can. Thank you all. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks.